welcome to the only regular ECY Shedcast for this week. Actually, this past few weeks. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? So I'm sorry about that. Um, it is called irregular for a reason, it has to be said. Um, so I've got absolutely p piles to tell you about today. Um, so... Firstly, today's the first day, isn't it, of uh, lockdown two, electric boogaloo. So we're in a bit of a strange place again in England, England only. Wales are just coming back out of lockdown and um, I'm actually not sure what's happening in Scotland. Um, but I think they're, they're tightly restricted as well. So um, it's a bit weird. Um, I can hear neighbours doing DIY and stuff. Um, and we've had fireworks go off at 2 p.m. That was a lot of fun. You know, when you've got a dog that's scared of fireworks. Um, seems a bit pointless, seeing as they can't even see them in daylight, but you know. Um, and it's weird, you know, all the neighbours' cars are still here and it's quiet. It's sort of like we get the road noise from the A1. Um, and although that's not completely gone like it did last time, it's definitely quieter. Um, so it's nice, it feels peaceful actually, I really like it. Um, and it's kind of nice to know that the neighbours are around actually, um, as odd as that sounds. So yeah, here we are, we've got a month. Um, it doesn't affect us that greatly, it has to be said, because obviously I work from home, um, and my staff are all working from home, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you if you're watching. And um, Dave still goes out to work. He can't. He can't work from home, and they can't stop because um, he works in a lab. So they have to keep going. So he's still out at work, and he cuts the shopping on his way home, just as he's always done. Um, it just means we can't see friends and family. Um, but to be honest, we're not that sociable anyway. So, you know, we don't do that absolutely tons anyway. Um, it does affect my running club. Obviously that all has to stop. Um, that's a big hit for me and for most of us, to be honest, because getting out running during the week is really difficult because it's dark after work. Um, so particularly for us women, it's there's a safety issue um obviously um, but also motivation it, it's really hard to get out the door when it's cold and wet and dark and if you've got a club training session booked you know you're committed you, you you're pretty much going whereas if it's just you going for a run you're so much less likely to do it so so that's quite tough and a, a lot of us will miss the social interaction that we get from that um obviously we can go out in pairs um but it's not the same it just isn't um so that's um that's going to be tough to try and make sure that i i keep up with my routine definitely um i really really benefit from the endorphins that i get from from running and exercise in general especially high impact um and that the energy that that creates for me really helps me with work so yeah it's um it's fine but it's just uh something that we have to adapt to for the next few weeks um anyway so that's that <laughs> um so that's where we're at really it's uh yeah it's weird you know there is there are so many people who are back on furlough and you know sort of wondering what to do with themselves and that kind of thing and then the, there's a lot of other people like myself who are working the same or longer hours than ever and kind of like i wish i had time for baking and, and nice things like that um but then if the people who are baking could bake for us that would be nice wouldn't it um she says we we have a bake there is a, a lady who runs a bakery um four doors down so i could i can get my hands on baked goods very quickly it has to be said um anyway yeah 
lockdown, here we go again. Uh, we'll see, see what happens, eh? So anyway, we're really busy. I've got tons of stuff that I want to do. And as always, not enough hours in the day to do it all. Um, and that's always the case, you know, like no matter how much help I have, I will always then find even more things to do. So it's kind of um, a bit of a perpetual thing, really. I've just got a head full of ideas and I never, ever have enough time to do them all. We've done a lot recently. Um, so I'm going to talk, uh, first of all, I'll talk about what's happened recently, what's still in stock and, and, and that kind of thing. Then I'll talk about what's coming up. Um, so... I have notes, so hopefully I won't forget anything important. Um, so what's recent? Okay, we've had a few updates recently. Um, they're happening quite frequently at the moment because of the way we're working. It's it's just changed the way that it's, uh, scheduling works and processing and all that kind of thing. Um, so we did Keld fingering, didn't we? When was that? Oh God, that was ah, oh, was actually longer ago than I realised. It seems like just a couple of weeks. Um, so there's still quite a bit of Keld fingering in stock. This is the Merino Linen Blend that you all love. Um, this Coolways Hedgerow. So there's still plenty of that in stock. Um, we've been sending out a lot to New Zealand and Australia recently, which is really lovely. Because, um, of course, you guys are going into summer now, so that does make sense. So thank you for your international orders. Very grateful for those. Um, but I have to say, you can, you can use curl fingering for warmer things. That's what I've done with this. This is Keld held double with Coniston, which I have here. And Coniston is the Merino Mohair blend. This has got a little bit of fluff to it, but like not tons. So I used those two yarns held together for this. And I have a gorgeous warm winter jumper. It's knitted up at a sort of Aran gauge. Um, I will show you the fit if I can. There you go. It's a nice boxy fit. I wanted it really oversized and big can you see that it's got lots of drape because it's knitted at a loose gauge it feels heavy to hold you um you know before you put it on you, you can kind of like that's that feels like a heavy jumper but once once you're wearing it i mean you it feels like quite a nice lightweight flowing garment and um, so anyway point being there's plenty of keld in stock um, which is quite unusual, so that's really good. And that segues nicely on to me saying there's lots of Coniston fingering in stock as well. So this works well instead of, you know, like holding a four-ply double with a mohair lace weight, for example, you could use just this. Um, so, it, yeah, it just makes a really, really nice fabric. It's so soft and silky, it's lovely. Um, so there's plenty of that in stock. That colourway, by the way, is dye pot look. It's nice and autumnal. Um, what else do we have lots of in stock? I just had a quick a quick scan through. Um, so I noticed there's still quite a lot of Keswick double knit in stock. Um, yeah, I'm quite surprised about that. Mind you, you know, it's easy for me to say because I'm here with them and I just love them all. That's why I have them. So it's easy to, for me to say that I'm surprised that they're still here. But there we go. So this colourway is dark oak, which, again, I absolutely love. And it shows those tweed flecks really nicely. It just makes such a gorgeous jumper. There are jumper quantities of um, a lot of the colours of Keswick uh, double knit in stock. Uh, I'll come back to that uh, in a bit for reasons which I shall explain. The other thing, uh, yeah, let's look at this next. There's still quite a bit of Brimham uh, High Twist in stock. 
This colourway is Sparrow. Um, Brimham High Twist is a lovely sturdy, but it's still soft and smooth, high twist sock yarn. Makes a, a fabulous pair of socks and the stitch definition on it is amazing. Um, this colourway Sparrow, did I already say that? I think I already said that. Sparrow. Sparrow, Sparrow, Sparrow. <laughs> I've definitely said it now. Um, so that's Brimham High Twist. There's quite a bit of that in stock. Um, another update that we did fairly recently, yeah, within the last couple of months, uh, is uh, Titus 4-ply. Um, so there's still quite a lot of colourways of Titus 4-ply in stock. Um, and there are sweater quantities of quite a lot of them as well. And enough, you know, you could do like colour block um, or stripes or, you know, anything like that. Sort of big brioche shawl or something. Now, the reason I've got those two out is because I also have a couple of um, FOs, finished objects, in these to show you, but I shall come on to those um, towards the end of the shed cast. So anyway, Titus 4 ply. So that's just random stuff that um, caught my eye um, and made me go, oh yes, there's quite a lot of that in stock. That's probably worth noting. Now, um, updates that we have done much more recently. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not imagining it, I don't think. So, um, Rosedale 4 ply. Now I'm hoping, because I'm in the kitchen with these lovely spotlights, that you might be able to really see the sparkle on that. But I don't know if the video is picking them up. Oh, maybe it is. Look at that sparkle. Oh, I'm an absolute sucker for it. So, um, Rosedale 4 ply, there's still, I wouldn't say loads in stock at all, but there's a decent amount and you could definitely get sweater quantities if you want. So I'm just obsessing over that sparkle. It's gorgeous. It's a completely different sparkle to Nate Before ply and I will show you a direct comparison in a minute. Um, these colourways are Thicket which has got lots of autumnal colours in it. Uh, just pop that there. Um, algae. Sludge green. My favourite. Um, and that goes really well with the gold sparkle, I think, as well. Um, nebula. And brick. Now this colourway was really popular on Keld, but hasn't been on the Rosedale 4 ply. And now it does look a bit different. It's probably slightly more orangey on this, but I still think it's gorgeous. And look at it with that gold. Actually talking of Keld, that reminds me, I did forget this. I have done a restock on Keld fingering as well in both brick and dandelion, which is obviously dandelion yellow. Um, and I did a large batch of both colours just as a top up. So if you like this colour and you, or you missed it when it was out on Keld, it's available again now. So that's brick. Um, so that's the Rosedale 4 ply. I've actually got, what have I got? Uh, oh, this. I can't remember whether I've shown you this before. I probably have. This is it knitted up in the Colourway Mountain hair. Um, and this is our Seriform hat designed by my other half, David. Um, oh, can you see the sparkle? It's so hard to see. Gold sparkle um, in yarn that's dyed pretty much the same colour, it turns out is really difficult to see. So, oops. I'm just trying to... Oh, you can just get a glimpse of it there. Anyway, um, I love this hat. I, I like a four ply hat, and I know I've said this before, because you can just stuff it in your pocket, and I'll just pop it on so you can hopefully see. I mean, I, I much more suit a hat with bobble on, it has to be said, but I haven't done with this one because it means I can just stuff it in my pocket 
um, when I inevitably then get too hot. Or I can stuff it in my pocket before I go out and then when I get cold again, I can put it back on. So I, I use this hat a lot. Um, so yeah. That's um, how Rosedale floor ply knits. So I'm trying to think if I've actually knitted anything else up in it. Do you know, I don't think I have yet. I've just got distracted by everything else. Um, right, so more sparkle. Um, this is moving on. Our, was that our latest update? I've lost track. <laughs> One of our latest updates, let's just leave it at that, was Nate Before Ply. Now, Nate Before Ply was completely out of stock by the time I did this. Um, and I think I sort of, it took, it was so long since our last update and it took, well, not so long, I suppose, at all, but it, it was just kind of like there in the box and I was ignoring it and I completely fell out of love with it. I'm not going to lie. And, and Laura said, you know, why don't we stock up on this? It's nearly sold out. And I, I was like, yeah, all right, okay, go on then. Um, and then it came and just as it arrived, the last few skeins sold out and I was like, all right, all right, I'll crack on with it. And I got it in the dye pots and I just completely fell back in love with it. I d sometimes that happens. You just kind of like need to completely revisit. Um, so the sparkle on this is completely different to the Rosedale four ply. Now this one, I'll just make sure I get them around, is Lurex. The Rosedale four ply is um, Stellina. So with the Rosedale, can you see the way the sparkle kind of sticks out? And it can be, it can be very subtle, like you can only see it when it's under the light. Whereas on the Nate Before Ply, the sparkle is much more obvious. It doesn't stick out, it's not as fibrous, um, but it, it's, it's more visible. And it really, really sparkles. Oh, just look. I really hope that this is videoing um, the sparkle nicely because it is just gorgeous. So this colorway is Norwegian Spruce, which is obviously a seasonal special. Um, I, I've only picked out a couple of the colors. A, a lot of them sold out, but there are still some left. This is, and this is Snowy Owl. So the sparkle's harder to see, obviously, on the cream, um, but certainly in person, it's more obvious. I, I hope you can see that nicely. Um, this is one of Laura and I's favourite colours. We really love Snowy Owl. Um, so that's an 8 before ply. Now I've got a, I've got a couple of samples. Again, not many, I just, it's just, you know, not enough time, I suppose, really. I have many, many, many samples, but they're across all the different yarns, so. Um, this, oh, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, no, I can't remember at all. It's a shawl. <laughs> no, that's my notes. I'll get there in a minute. Um, this was in the colourway... Foggy Daybreak, um, which this is from a couple of years ago. I, th I think probably a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think yeah, it's a couple of years ago. Um, this this colourway, I've I've made the colours kind of more rich and a bit more visible um, in later dye lots, so you can see the orange more. Um, but basically, it's it's grey and peach, um, and sort of gentle shades of pink. Like the, when the sun, you know, on a foggy morning, if there's there's a little bit of a, a peachy sunrise and then it's foggy, but then the sun's breaking through as well. That's what that is. Um, I've just got my notes. Uh, right. So, and then the other thing that I've got, so you can see how some of the dark colours uh, come out. On Nate before ply is this. Now this, if I remember correctly, I 
think this is Pattern Please or PPS by Louise Tilbrook. It's Louise Tilbrook, definitely. Um, and the stripes are in Nate Before Ply. So they're not colours that are in stock, but it's just so you can see how they look. The darker colours. Um, so yeah, the sparkle. It's just gorgeous. Now I did also do um, my festive fun colourway. Um, obviously this is very much a seasonal special. So I, I did a large batch. Um, uh, this is the skein that I've stolen for myself. You know, it'd be rude not to. Um, so that's festive fun. It's sold out, but I've just finished dyeing up another large batch of it. It might be the only other sparkly batch that I do, but I'm thinking about doing it on chunky as well. J again, just one batch. Um, I think on the latest batch that I've done, the greens come out darker, I think. I mean, I'll know when I, when it's dried up, but, um, I think the green might be darker. Anyway, I'll let you know when that's ready. That's festive fun. You can see how it knits up. Actually, this is another Louise Tilbrook pattern. This is the Fuss Free Festival shawl. Oh with a little addition, um, in festive fun, sparkly festive fun. I absolutely love this shop. This is the two skein version. So you just carry on knitting um, until you run out of yarn or get bored. And I, I just like the size of it with two skeins. It's got little bubbles on as well. Um, I, like a, I like a big cozy shawl. So there you go. So that's how festive fun is. Obviously, every skein is different. Um, but this this pattern breaks up all the all the colours really nicely. So yeah, and you, so you can kind of like sparkle and feel a bit Christmassy, but without it being like super in your face. Um, so that's the idea with that. So more festive fun coming soon. Okay, so that's an AP4 ply. And then the latest thing that we did was um, Pendle Aaron. Um, we sort of ended up doing it as a surprise update, to be honest, because it was just like, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get the pictures. I'm just gonna have to do them whenever I can. We'll upload them as soon as possible. And that's just kind of how it happens sometimes. You know, you can't always do loads and loads of planning. Uh, so I've brought a couple of colours out. There's Black Magic Rose and there's plenty of that left. Um, which I just adore. Gorgeous aubergine colour. So it looks kind of velvety on this yarn. It's so soft, it's lovely. And then my other favourite is Pumpkin Seeds which obviously is just like basically autumn in a skein. Um, I, this is a seasonal special that I've done in previous years as well. So I was getting quite excited about it being time to make more. Absolutely, I just love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, so that's Pendlar and that's pure superwash merino and it's squishy and it's lovely and I've got I must have plenty of samples knitted in it because I've had it for years and I haven't brought any out with me. Um, but I have a jumper which I quite often show on Instagram and stuff in my Today in Knitwear thing. Um, and it's a like plum pink coloured jumper with a cowl neck. Um, and it's called That Pattern September Morn by Thea Coleman. And I knitted it in, I think it was like maybe, um, I want to say 2012, but it might have been a bit later. Uh, oh, no later than 2014 anyway. Um, and I still wear it tons every winter at, well, kind of like late autumn and into spring as well. Um, 
and it just to my mind it still basically looks brand new you know it's not it's barely pilled you get always get a bit of peeling under the arms don't you but other than that it's not pilled the stitch definition is still crisp um it's just it, it is such a fantastic jumper um so pendle aaron i really do recommend it and i say i do say that from very long experience um because that jumper is years old and it's had so much abuse so yeah there's plenty in stock and again there are sweater quantities i always aim to provide sweater quantities whether that's enough for like a single color jumper or a color with like color work around the top so then i'm thinking about what colors go with other colors as well that's always my aim um so that's those are the latest updates the other thing is um the super secret seasonal stash boxes <laughs> try saying that five times in a row um i think right now we, i think we might have one crochet one left um but yeah the the, the rest of them certainly the knitting ones are sold out and the crochet ones very very nearly so i actually just wanted to say thank you um for buying them thank you like really really appreciate it because they are a big investment um and that has to happen over the summer so i kind of go along thinking oh god oh god no one's gonna buy any you know and we sell out every year but you still just think to yourself what if nobody buys them and that insecurity never goes away so thank you i'm really really grateful we've got two fantastic designers involved ellen is to, is is making the bags as usual um, and then the yarn is dyed to match those or is in, sort of inspired by them at least um and there's quite a few really good special elements i can't wait for you to to unbox them uh one of the elements is coming from afar that's all i'm saying about that uh, another one of them, it, well actually the other two really good things are fairly local and just thinking what do I, how much do I want to say, both edible but in different ways, um, that's all I'm saying, that's it, uh, so yeah and I've ordered like some other extra festive bits just because I can't resist so thank you thank you for the for, for buying the boxes i really really do appreciate that um so we should be packing those up over the next three or four weeks and um start shipping on the 4th of december i'm just a bit worried about covid affecting the post um so i'm keen to get them shipped as early as i possibly can but obviously there's there's a lot of work to do to get them packed up um so yeah 4th of December for them to start going out especially the international ones um so yeah Covid and, and Brexit it's all such a worry um it's been affecting things for ages and it just kind of feels endless at this point but you just you just got to try and work further ahead really anyway um so that's that covers all stuff that has happened recently. Um, next, I oh, we had a delivery of Milburn Double Knit in steel. Uh, no, in fact, I think DPD due to bring that within the next half hour. So if you hear the dogs barking, um, you will know that DPD have brought my Milburn Double Knit in steel. So. Um, I got sent for applied by accident yesterday <laughs> but the steel is is dyed and ready i've been waiting for that to come back into stock because that affects magic circles kits and then um the double knit kits out of the cat knits book so things like my really cool um cat knits jumper you know my charcoal one with the the, the cats um in color work going all the way down in stripes in fact i meant to grab that to to remind you but i've forgotten um it's on the website anyway you, you can see it on there um so 
Yeah, cat knits, double knit and magic circles back in stock. Um, and magic circles, which I have remembered, I remembered because I'm making um, the black tulip. Yeah, the black tulip version. We've got a few versions now. I'm making the black tulip version. So, uh, just see if you can see all those colours. Oh, this isn't going well, is it? Right, there's one, that one, that one, and a pile of those. Um, so this one uses black tulip instead of autumn fields, because autumn fields was in the original um, kit, um, but was discontinued because we've replaced it with compost. So if you, you can choose the comp compost instead of black tulip as well. Um, so yeah, so that's my magic circles. I've been making it for absolutely ages and these are really quick and easy to make, but I just only very occasionally pick up my bag and make a circle. So it's taking ages, but they are actually really quick and easy to make. Um, and it's gonna be such a beautiful project. Well, it is beautiful. I've seen the original in person and it was just stunning. So that would be a great project to do maybe in lockdown if you're looking for something to do. I feel a bit cheeky saying that, but it is undeniable. <laughs> and we've got lots of other kits as well for things like blankets and um, nice, relaxing, soothing projects. Right, so that is all the stuff that is in stock. And okay, coming soon, there's a lot and there's to just tons more that I want to do, but definite things coming soon. So the very next thing we've got coming up is Eldwick Lace. So that's our mohair silk lace weight fluff, big fluff. Um, so that is coming next. After that, oh, there's, there's a few things that are all sort of happening around about the same time, because um, I'm working on them all at once really. We have woodbine kits. Um, I've had quite a lot of requests for those now. They will be back in stock ASAP. Um, this is all now within the next two weeks. Two to three weeks. Yeah. Say three to be sure, but I will aim for two. Uh, so fluff, woodbine kits. Woodbine was the pattern that was out in Lane magazine. Um, it's got lace down the front and then plain arms. It's Boland Aaron held double with Eldwick lace. Um, so we sell the kits. We don't sell the pattern. Um, you, you have to get that separately. Um, but we have the yarn packs. Um, so it's just the original colours that are coming back because um, they're what's been requested. Um, but you could always use, I mean, you could use Pendle Aaron for it. Um, and also we've got Lowther Lace. If, if Eldwick Lace, the mohair doesn't suit you, we do have Lowther Lace as well, which is the baby alpaca fluff. Um, so Woodbine. Okay. I've already mentioned more festive fun coming soon. And I am thinking about doing a batch on Chunky as well. So it would be good to know if you're interested in it in Chunky. Um, ask and four ply, that's baby alpaca and silk. That is in the dye pots as we speak. Um, so that's coming very soon. Bit of an underrated yarn, I think, but there's a sweater pattern coming out in it this month. I believe it's ready, the pattern's ready to, to be released um, around about now. So I think that'll probably happen before the yarn's ready. Um, and it's an all over lace, uh, jumper it's absolutely gorgeous i've shared it on instagram um but obviously we'll share it again sort of when it gets released and you know if i get tagged in the post then i'll just i'll just share it so you'll see it uh and i'm sure it'll be in a newsletter actually as well um but yeah that's a, a really really gorgeous sweater um so that's asking for ply and then the other thing that's coming up is a brand new yarn and um, i've dyed it all up and it's just waiting for processing now. Um, well, actually some of it's still drying. 
and that is this, which is Keswick Aran. So it's the tweed again, but in Aran. And this is a merino uh, based yarn, by the way. So this colorway is Leaf Piles. And I, I might change that name actually. I'm thinking about changing that name, I might do. I have lots of leaf based names. But anyway, that's that. Um, and this one is Slate. And I kind of thought I was being a bit boring doing just doing Slate, but I, I just really like it actually. It's one of my oldest colours and I still love it. So, the, I mean, these are just loosely twisted. So this gives you an idea of what the yarn looks like when it's not been professionally twisted up. <laughs> Still got all the ties on and everything. So, um, I mean, obviously I need to knit and crochet these up and make sure that, you know, they're absolutely right. So, oh, it's so squishy. And I'm really excited to bring this out actually, because it's super squishy. And I've done some colors, all colors actually, that I just adore. And I hope you will do too. So that's that. So that's all the stuff that's coming soon. Eldwick Lace, Kezi Karen, Woodbine Kits, or well, Yarn Packs, Festive Fun, and Ask and Four Ply. Okay? Uh, there'll be tons more as well, but that's the stuff that's imminent. Um, so that's all my notes used up. So... The other thing, well, the next thing I wanted to go through is um, this week's FOs, finished objects. Firstly, there's this. This is Vertical Stripes by Petite Knit. Um, I can't remember what size I made. Four and a half millimetre needles. Um, a fairly quick knit because of the gauge, but somehow it also took me ages. It's taken me about two months to knit this. So it might just be because I didn't get much time to work on it. Anyway, I'm so, so glad that I did because I love this jumper. The colours are thunder and charcoal blended together. And then I've done my thing that I always do around the inside of the neck to tighten it up, which is to crochet a line of slip stitch all the way around. So that's why the neck slightly stands up. Um, but it's a much better fit on me because of that. And actually, I've done the same around the armholes. On the inside, I've crocheted slip stitch all the way around so that they wouldn't block out um, any more baggy because I don't like my sleeves too baggy. Um, other FOs are this. Is, this is Claire's latest. This is Kentish Town. Um, it's a little baby cardigan, obviously. It's adorable. Um, by Sophie McCain, um, which is Unicorn Knit Design, I think her handle is. Um, there's a link to her from our website anyway. And that's in Pendle 4 ply in coppice. Um, I wanted a sample in this colour because it's sort of popular but also underrated at the same time. It's like, if you know, you know. If you're into greens, then, then you'll like it but I think it probably gets overlooked as well. So, and it's just a nice, soft, earthy green. And this, the cardigan is just, it's so cute. So, um, yeah, I should be wheeling this sample back out every time I do Pendle 4 ply now. Although actually I've not had a chance to do that for ages either. But anyway, that's there, ready and waiting for when I do. Um, oh, that's stuck on needles. And then, um, some of you may have already seen this. This is, it's called Solasta Cowl um, by oh, Liz Cork. Just totally forgot her name then. Sorry, Liz, if you're watching. <laughs> um, so I posted a picture of me wearing this with a grey cardigan and lots of other grey things. But um, yeah, this is brilliant to sort of just plonk on under a coat and stuff like that. Um, 
you know where, where with the shawl you've got your pointy ends with this it's just that's it so it's, which i think is a really cool idea um so this is titus four ply in charcoal which is why i got the four ply, four ply in charcoal out earlier so you can see how it knits up it's, this colorway is very steely on this yarn the silk in it i think because it's so reflective it makes it look much more light and steely than it does on on a lot of other yarns should have brought another one out to compare shouldn't i so yeah but it's it's soft it's smooth it's silky it's drapey titus four ply again like pendlara and it's an absolute ecy classic um and then another thing this actually this isn't 100% finished this is like 99% finished as you might be able to see there are still ends that need dealing with I don't know if you can actually see them or maybe you can't I can <laughs> this big beautiful thing knitted by Debbie thank you Debbie I'm very lucky aren't I to have such good people working for me they just go along with everything that I say. They're very tolerant. Um, this is Hencliff, which is one of my patterns. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely enormous. This is two skeins of Titus four ply. That's how huge it is. You don't have to make it that big. Um, it is stunning. Shall I put it on instead of waving it around and then you can see? It is, too, it is ridiculously big, actually. Um, but it's so beautiful. Look at it. Let's open out some of that lace. Is that the right way around? Yeah. There we go. Look. No, that way. That's it. Look at that. So, again, um, I thought I was being a bit boring um, with this colourway. Um, but actually, I'm really, really glad that we went for this in the end because it's just perfect for it, isn't it? And so this is Whispering Grass. It just goes with everything. Now, what I've picked out, actually, I thought was Whispering Grass. And as you can see, it's not, it's not at all, is it? What an idiot. It's linen, this colourway. Um, which is off-white really, it's a sort of pearly colour, whereas the Whispering Grass is that bit more creamy. Um, so this is two skeins, um, and as I said earlier, there's plenty of Titus in stock, um, and the pattern is available on our website. You see, it was written for the Mildyed Ask and Four Ply um, in, I think it was Blossom, and that's long since sold out. And I thought it was about time we updated the pattern and had a lovely shiny new sample. So, yeah. And again, it's it's lovely, you know, it's, it's so soft and it's really smooth, but it's also silky and, and quite, it's sort of posh, but you know, you could wear it for a dog walk probably under your coat, maybe be careful if you're bending down to poo pick, obviously. <laughs> um, and then keep it on and go out, you know, you could go, be going out for dinner and still have the same thing on, um, just as a sort of really nice, pretty accessory. And it's warm, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I must get those ends dealt with and, and get some proper, proper posh photos of it and get that pattern updated. I'm on a bit of a mission to update quite a lot of patterns at the moment and it's very time consuming um, for both myself and Laura and trying to do that whilst also all the production and everything else, um, it's, a, it's a slow process. The next thing I shall move on to is my current whips works in progress um so and these will probably be the same again next week to be honest 
So I, I've gone completely monochrome actually. Um, this is a pair of socks in Keswick fingering. Just see if I can get that pattern showing. There we go. So there's the heel. I use a short row heel. And there's the pattern down the front. Uh, there we go. Uh, and there is the short row heel, which is my preferred method. I just find it quick and a good fit. Um, so that's Keswick fingering in dry stone wall. Um, and I'm just on to sock number two um, and have now abandoned it for another monochrome project. Oh, that pattern, by the way, is Pure Look by Louise Tilbrook. Um, and as I say, I have aban now abandoned that because I've got distracted by another monochrome project. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Try and pick it up without rubbing it off the needles. There we go. Now this is Penny Kewick by Justina Lorkowska, aka Letters Knits or Leets Knits or No. I still haven't decided how that's pronounced. I really must ask her. Leets Knits? No. I think it's probably Letters Knits. Or Letty? Anyway, Justina, <laughs> if you're watching, please tell me how to pronounce Leet or Letty or Letters Knits. And then finally, I can get it right. Maybe on the next video. Um, anyway, it's Penny Kewick, which is a place name in Scotland. And so for the first colour, I'm using Rosedale Four Ply and Charcoal. In fact, uh, you see, I have got another thing made in Rosedale-ish. And what was I saying about charcoal? Can you, you can see the difference there. It's darker on that than it is on the Titus Four Ply. I don't know how obvious that is, but it looks much more steely on the Titus Four Ply. And then colour number two is Brimham four ply also in dry stone wall same as my socks and then colour number three will be Hayton four ply in snow leopard and then colour number four is Brimham uh, high twist so I'm just should have neatened up this uh, cake of yarn before I brought it on, shouldn't I? Oh, honestly, what a mess. There we go. Brimham High Twist in Drizzle. So it's cream again, but with just the tiniest hints of grey to it. So yeah, all monochrome at the moment. <laughs> just just had a hankering for, for a bit of grey, really. Um, so yeah and um that's really that's really everything i think well it's probably not at all is it actually if we're honest but um yeah and you might have noticed i'm in a different location today um i am in our lovely new kitchen which has been in progress for three months and is still not finished um but it's very much usable and it's beautiful and we absolutely adore it um but this is, to be honest, this is a much better space to sit and do a video in. Um, and yeah, so hopefully it'll get finished. I don't know, before Christmas? Anyway, it's usable, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and yeah, I, you know, in previous uh, shed casts, I've done it up in the office, which is next to the garage, which is our stock room. And I've got all of the boxes of yarn out into the office and crammed them all in so that I would have them you know all around me on display which is lovely but it is a lot of work um and it, and then it, because not only that but then I've got to put it all away again and it sounds silly but if it takes me half an hour to set up and half an hour to put it all away that that's a full hour that I'm not dying yarn 
and you know out of a I don't know 10 hour day that's it's quite a bit less yarn potentially so yeah and also it was it was putting me off getting around to doing another shed cast because I was like well oh, I'm gonna have to get everything out and then I've got to put it all away again and I just don't have time and oh it's such a faff and, so, and, and of course the longer you leave it the more you have to talk about and then the more stuff I've got to potentially bring out of the garage and then put all away again. So I thought, right, what I'm going to do now, going forwards, is just get a handful of items like I have done today, um, just bring them into the kitchen in one box. And what I'm going to have to make sure I do is put them all away immediately afterwards and not leave them lying around for two weeks and then wonder where on earth they've gone and all that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, being able to do this on a, on a, a smaller scale, a physically smaller scale, um, it's a lot easier. And hopefully I might be able to do it a bit more often because of that, because it'll feel like a lot less of a faff. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope that, um, that that's worked out okay for you while, while you've been watching. Um, I'll tell you what this pile is just here, um, talking, talking about, you know, all the kitchen work and that kind of thing. Whilst it was all being done and it was such a mucky job, I kept the door shut going through into the lounge and um, quite a lot of my most, most used knitwear was out in the lounge. And it was in boxes and the door was shut, but honestly, the plaster dust it is because we had to have all the walls re not just replastered but completely boarded out and everything. The plaster dust was just horrendous. It goes everywhere. It's so fine that you can keep all the doors shut. The doors shut and it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. Um, there was one because uh, we were we were having to go away um, to do our washing and see the dogs every weekend. There was one weekend, particular weekend, where we came back. And we walked in and obviously all the dust had settled while we'd been away. We walked in on the Sunday night. And bearing in mind, we had no kitchen or anything at all at that point. So the house also felt quite crappy. And we did, we walked in and I went in the lounge and I just noticed everything, the entire, it was just covered in plaster dust. It, knitwear coats, shoes, the crockery, because obviously we'd had to move everything out of the kitchen, crockery, my knitting bag, um, everything, ornaments, books, the actual sofas, even the, the carpet, even though I'd had that lounge door shut while they were in here, everything was completely covered and you could go like that and really clearly see um, plaster dust. That and soot are the absolute worst. And they're sticky as well, that's the thing. Anyway, um, I, I, I cried, I have to be honest, I just cried because it was just so overwhelming, the thought of every single item in this room needs cleaning and not just a dust, but properly cleaning. Point being, that included a re a pati one particular box of knitwear got, I don't know why it must have been nearer to the door, but it, I just had to rewash and block everything. Um, so there's this, there was this shawl behind me. This is another Justina shawl, if you can see. Oh, it's hard to see that lace. There's a lace pattern there. Maybe you can see it. A bit more there. It's called Maya's shawl or Maya. Actually, I would probably say Maya. M A Y A Maya's shawl in um, Whitfell uh, chunky in coal, which we do have in stock, by the way. And we have the patterns. I think I'm pretty sure we do. Um, so there was that, but there was also these, and I thought actually I'll keep these out and I'll just have a little chat about them on the um, shedcast. Why not? Because these wouldn't, not all of them, would otherwise um, 
get any airtime. So there was this, and it's all stuff that we forget about it, don't you, over the summer, and then you come back to it in winter and you're like, oh, I forgot I had that. So there's this. That is um, ha my hand spun from many years ago, um, held double with Eldwick lace. And it's a pattern that I designed, <laughs> I've forgotten the name of. It's the one that I designed for Midwinter Yarns. What did we call it? Can't remember, I'm gonna have to put it in the show notes, aren't I? <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh dear. Um, anyway, so that's, that's that. It's a lovely lightweight hat and it's satisfying to have used my hand spun actually for the first time in, in a very, very long time. And I don't, you know, I don't get time to spin at all these days. I haven't done it for years. And I hope I will do it at some point again. So to have actually knitted with it is very satisfying. Um, this hat is pro called Profiterole Hat. I'm not going to pretend I can remember the name of the lovely person that designed it. She's in our Facebook group as well. So if you're watching, I'm really sorry, but please shout and... Um, sort of say it's me it's me that hat's mine um i hope you can see that pattern the lace pattern you can you can see it quite nicely in real life anyway this is melbourne oh, do you know i'm not sure whether that's four ply or doesn't it it's got to be four ply surely it's mil it's milburn either way in moss which i might add is discontinued and low stock held double again with Eldrick lace in large um i yes i do like i do like mohair a lot so that's that that's profiterole hat it's very nice and light as well this how gorgeous is this oh actually this isn't this is nate before ply as well mixed with Ah, oh, what was the base on that? I can't remember. It's um, I think it might be Pendle four ply, the grey. It's like Pendle or Brimham. I'm pretty sure it. Well, it's one of those two. I just can't remember which one. Um, and then the stripes are an eight B four ply, so sparkly again. I hope you can tell. And this um, is the Mickleby Cowl, which Louise Tilbrook designed for last year's. Is that last year's? I'm sure, it, yeah, it must have been. Um, seasonal Surprise Stash Box. Oh, that's the end of the round. Let's show you the front. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous. It's nice and squishy. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that's that one. And then this. These are my Rokeby fingerless mittens in Ascom four ply. This was the milled eyed version that I was telling you about earlier um, in uh, Walnut and Air. Again, both sold out. Long since sold out and discontinued. Well, that means I can wear these without worrying about ruining them. I have to say the baby alpaca silk you know, people tend to think that this kind of yarn isn't good for um, colour work, but I found, honestly found it completely fine. And I find these to be, I mean, I wear these a lot. That's why, I, you know, that's why these things were near the door. So I like my fingerless mittens to be tight fitting. I think that's really, I think that looks really smart. I should put the other one on as well. Um... Love fingerless mittens. I've always had a real thing for making fingerless mittens. Um, so yeah, they're really good hard wearing. I mean, I, I made these years ago. Uh, and again, they've had a lot of wear. And you can't tell. And you couldn't tell before I washed them. It's not, it's not just because I washed them. Um, so I, I'm actually now... Um, knitting a fresh pair of these in Milburn and again we'll be updating that pattern so that's Rokeby um, these 
these, I, I, I've talked about leg warmers before. I wear leg warmers to 